Um, shall we start, Ambassador? Of course, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, so like I said before, we're going to introduce the seminar in Spanish, and then we're going to switch into English for, for the conference of the Ambassador. Muy buenos días a todos. Eh, muchas gracias por estar acá eh, presentes el día de hoy. Mi nombre es Jerónimo Delgado, soy el, el secretario general de Alada Internacional, profesor de la Universidad Externado de Colombia eh, y coordinador del Observatorio de Asuntos Internacionales de la Universidad Externado de Colombia. El día de hoy, eh, Tatiana Gelbes, que es la persona que coordina, que organiza los espacios de diálogo salada, no nos puede acompañar, está dictando clase. Entonces yo la estoy reemplazando. Este es un espacio eh, que se abre dentro de las dinámicas de diálogo salada, que como ustedes saben, es un espacio que crea Alada Internacional hace dos años ya para eh, discutir temas relevantes de Asia y África, algunos de coyuntura y otros espacios para que los investigadores de Asia y África en el continente expongan los resultados de sus investigaciones. El día de hoy tenemos justamente uno de esos temas de, de actualidad de coyuntura eh, y hemos invitado al, a su excelencia el señor eh, Ahmed Hachemi, embajador de la República Argelina Democrática y Popular en Colombia, para debatir, para que nos cuente un poco sobre la reciente ruptura de relaciones diplomáticas entre Argelia y Marruecos, eh, el escalamiento de las tensiones entre los dos, eh, y para hablar un rato con él. La idea entonces, como vamos a funcionar, es la siguiente. Todos ustedes tienen los micrófonos apagados eh, durante el, el tiempo que presenta el señor embajador. Y después de la presentación del señor embajador, abriremos los micrófonos para las personas que quieran hacer preguntas. La, la charla del señor embajador va a ser bastante corta, serán unos 10, 15 minutos en los que él nos va a exponer eh, las relaciones entre Argelia y Marruecos y la ruptura de relaciones diplomáticas. Y luego abriremos el espacio para que ustedes hagan todas las preguntas que quieran para el señor embajador. Eh, les presento entonces, no solamente al embajador eh, Hashemi, sino también eh, al señor Fasi Mohamed Hamza, que es el agregado político de la Embajada de, de Argelia en Colombia y que también nos acompaña el día de hoy. ¿Vale? So, Ambassador, the introductions have been made. Thank you again for your time and, and, and for being here with us. And the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you, dear professor and dear friend. It's always a great pleasure for me to represent uh, uh, the, my country, Algeria, and uh, uh, the embassy, and to have a talk with all the friends present here with us. It's an opportunity for me to thank you personally, uh, Professor Delgado Geronimo, and to uh, thank the association for this uh, opportunity, uh, giving me the floor to talk and to present and maybe to explain the decision made by, uh, by the Algerian uh, uh, government on to uh, break down its diplomatic relation uh, with uh, Morocco. I will be uh, brief and I will uh, make uh, a statement. In fact, I will read a text to be brief based on the declaration made by uh, uh, our Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Antan Lamamra, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs and uh, Algerian uh, community abroad. Uh, as part of the implementation of the decision made by the Security Council, the High Security Council, on the revision of the Algerian-Moroccan bilateral relations, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad, Amtal Lamama, made on August 24, 2021, in Algiers, the declaration of the breakdown of diplomatic relations between Algeria and Morocco. In terms of bilateral relationship between Algeria and Moroccan, and Moroccan relations, I have to say, one, since the independence of Algeria, the state of Morocco has never ceased to carry out hostile, unfriendly, and malicious actions against Algeria. This animosity and this systematic, methodical, and premeditated nature of which is documented had started with the open war of aggression in 1963, launched by the Royal Moroccan Armed Forces against Algeria, 
which came from gain and dependence on July 5th, 1962, less than one year later, this Moroccan-led armed confrontation cost Algeria 850 martyrs. Despite the terrible consequences of this war, Algeria overcame, <coughs> sorry, overcame this painful episodic, episode by signing with the Kingdom of Morocco a treaty of fraternity, good, neighborless, and cooperation and the convention of delineating the borders between the two neighboring countries, respectively in Ifran in 1969 and in Rabat in 1972, enshrining the principles of inviolability of the border inherited from independence. Second, in 1976, Morocco abruptly broke off diplomatic relationship with Algeria, which had just recognized the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic as a sovereign state. <clears throat> the two parties decided in 1988 to normalize their, their bilateral relations and to place them in the perspective of joint positive constructions, construction, the principle of which were jointly agreed through the joint communique of May 16, 1988. These principles are as follows. One, a desire to promote permanent relationship of peace, uh, good neighborless and cooperation between the two peoples of Algeria and Morocco, and the reaffirmation of the full validity of the treaties, conventions, and agreements concluded between the two parties. Second, an effective contribution to the acceleration of the construction of the the Arab Maghreb Union. Third, a contribution to tightening, to the tightening of Arab ranks around the sacred cause of the Palestinian people with the view to the satisfaction of their national rights, including their rights to the creation of a state in their part and the, the liberation of all occupied territories, Arab occupied territories, including the Holy See of Al-Quds. Fourth and final, support to, for a just and final solution to the conflicts in Western Sahara through a referendum of self-determination, regular and free, taking place in the most total sincerity and without any uh, constraint. While Algeria has always respected the aforementioned commitments, Morocco and its security and propaganda apostles carried out media attacks and did not hesitate to propagate defamatory remarks against Algeria and its leaders. In this regard, it should be recalled that the most serious is during the meeting of the non-aligned movement organized recently in 13 and 14 uh, at the UN headquarters, where the permanent representative of Morocco to the UN uh, distributed an official note affirming that, and I quote, valiant Kabyle people deserve more than any other to fully enjoy the right to self-determination. In front of this particularly dangerous and irresponsible provocation, Algeria has shown restraint in publicly demanding or asking from uh, uh, the uh, Moroccan side the clarification, the, uh, the, the defining silence of the latter on this subject, which has persisted since July 16, 19, uh, 2021, uh, clearly reflects the mark of political support from the highest authority in this country. In addition, these hostile actions also concern the active and documented collaboration of the Moroccan state 
as stated by our Minister of Foreign Affairs, said with two terrorist organizations known as MAG and Rashad. For the Algerian authorities, these two organizations are considered as uh, terrorist organizations whose latest heinous crimes are linked to the, their premeditated involvement in the forest fires that ravaged several regions in, Alger in Algeria and the object torture and murder of our compatriot, late Jamal Ben Smail. In a new escalation, Morocco directly endorsed the statement of the Israeli Minister of Foreign Affairs, as stated by our minister, uh, the uh, Israeli Minister of Foreign Affairs, during a visit, an official visit to Rabat against Algeria in contradiction with the spirit and the letter of the Treaty of Fraternity, Good Neighborless, and Cooperation, and the commitments made under the, uh, the uh, community in 1988. With regard to the Western Sahara issue, it has, it, I, I have to say and recall that the issue is on the board of the General Assembly of the United Nations for 58 years. And uh, unfortunately, this international body has recorded very little progress in the process aimed at holding the free referendum to allow the Sahrawi people to exercise their right to self-determination. The situation which currently prevails in the Sahrawi territory is another chapter of obstruction policy adopted by the uh, Moroccan authorities, which essentially aims to hamper all initiatives and opportunities to ensure a just and final solution to that issue, which requires the organization by the UN uh, of a referendum in Western Sahara, free from any administrative and military constraints. On the other hand, and with regard to the commitment related to the organization of self-determination uh, in Western Sahara, the Kingdom of uh, Morocco has renounced it, although it was solemnly taken by late Kingdom Hassan II and recorded in the official documents of the AU and the United Nations and the current leaders of the Kingdom uh, uh, now harbor the illusion of being able to impose the dictate of the international community concerning the alleged preeminence and exclusively of their thesis of autonomy. For its part, Algeria has always reminded the international community that support for just and final solution to the conflict in Western Sahara requires the organization as it and uh, now from 1991 uh, plan to organize uh, a referendum of self-determination uh, regular and free taking place in the most total sincerity and without any constraint. And finally, allow me to say one word, uh, some words in uh, on the uh, regional security. And I have to recall that the fact that the Moroccan authorities to introduce a foreign military power in the Maghreb region and to incite its representative to make malicious and fallacious and malicious remark against a neighboring country uh, constitutes a serious and irresponsible act which violates Article 5 of the Treaty of Fraternity, Good Neighborliness, and cooperation, as well as the commitments made under the joint communique on May 16, 1981. This is the substance uh, of the uh, declaration made by our Minister of Foreign Affairs and the uh, uh, Algerian community abroad, Mr. Amtan Lamamra, on that topic, on that subject, on August. Uh, 24, uh, uh, 2021. So thank you for your attention.
Thank you very much, Ambassador. Um, we are starting to get um, questions on the chat. So I will read them to you and then we can go from there and start the, the, sections question, the question section. Um, we get one from Dr. Lia Rodriguez from Argentina. And she says, we know the role of the Chinese investment in both countries and also that China supports the creation of, a, of an infrastructure corridor through Algeria that will connect Sub-Saharan Africa to the Mediterranean. Do you think there is any chance that China develops a strategic role to reorient the conflict situation towards cooperation between both countries? I, I, I thank you, Professor, and I thank uh, Professor Rodriguez from Argentina, Argentina uh, for this uh, important question. I think I could confirm that we have uh, excellent and strategic uh, relationship uh, with uh, China, which is very close and uh, uh, friendly uh, countries. We are kind out uh, a cooperation, strategic cooperation with uh, 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 China. But I think to talk about uh, maybe uh, effort of uh, mediation, it's up to the uh, Moroccan authorities to uh, respond to what we uh, uh, are asking from them from the 16th of July uh, is a clarification uh, um, uh, requested by the Minister of Foreign Affairs as part of from, uh, Algeria to what said their ambassador to the uh, UN on that uh, date. And I read and I quoted this uh, uh, declaration. It was not in fact, the declaration, it was an official note distributed during an official meeting of the non line movement. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassador, I have a question for you. Um, historically, Morocco has been absent from the African Union. Uh, Morocco went back to being a member a few years ago. Uh, do you think that? has affected Morocco's ability to gain support within the African Union towards this topic of the Western Sahara? And how is Algeria dealing with, with Morocco being a member of the African Union in, in the topic of Western Sahara? Yeah. Thank you, Professor, for this uh, very pertinent and uh, important uh, question on the issue uh, which is with, within the uh, uh, African Union standards is very uh, important. It's up to the Moroccan uh, authorities to uh, mm, uh, to uh, to have in mind all the decisions made uh, uh, that the African Union and the OU made on the uh, Sahari, Sahrawi uh, uh, conflict in that uh, in that part. And uh, uh, I think it, uh, it is uh, the decisions made even before the uh, African Union uh, within uh, the resolution of this uh, uh, issue, the uh, uh, Sahrawi uh, uh, issue. And there is very clear decision uh, to uh, be applied and to be implemented by all member uh, states. Just, just to recall that uh, Morocco left the Organization of African Unity uh, in 1940, uh, in 1984. And when, as you said, came back, it's not a came back, in fact, it's an addition to, uh, uh, it's a decision from the Moroccan authorities to uh, adhere to the uh, African uh, Union. All right, thank you, Ambassador. We have another question in the chat. Um, Lucas Fava asks, what opinion has Spain expressed on the issue of, of the rupture of diplomatic relations and how did the Algerian government take it? I think uh, Spain and other countries expressed uh, uh, maybe take uh, note, take, take 
take note of this uh, decision and uh, maybe hope that the uh, uh, relationship between the two countries as part of the all the countries in the North Africa and the Maghreb will be uh, better. And this is what we uh, this is what we uh, mm, uh, mm, this is what we uh, prefer. But it's up to also the uh, Moroccan part to uh, be able and to uh, to respond to what we have asked from uh, the date that uh, their uh, ambassador to the UN made that uh, declaration. And uh, even from that date, he made another declaration, the same declaration he made on, on July 16th about the uh, the uh, self-determination, I quote, of the Kabyle people. And he just made this declaration in a meeting uh, taking place on the, uh, in, in Latin America uh, region. So he repeated the same uh, terms of uh, what he said on July 16th. Thank you, Ambassador. We have another question from Felipe Medina. Um, he thanks you for the talk. And then he asks, Morocco currently is provided with natural gas through the Maghreb Europe pipeline that links Algeria to Spain. Cutting diplomatic ties also means ending gas supplies for Morocco? It could be. We didn't, uh, uh, we didn't uh, express an official opinion on that. But what we say, he said, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, he said that uh, it's, it, it is uh, an agreement between uh, the uh, Moroccan authorities and uh, it's up to Sonatrak to deal with that uh, question. All right, thank you, Ambassador. We have another question from uh, Mah, who is the um, Sahrawi representative to Colombia. He asks, to which extent does the Israeli presence in Morocco threaten stability and security in the Maghreb countries? I think our minister said clearly that uh, the presence of uh, Israel in the region will be uh, a preoccupation uh, for the region. And uh, I think uh, it will be uh, a risk for our security, national security and the regional security in the region. I think also it will be, uh, <clears throat> it will be a, a preoccupation from the, for the, uh, the unity and harmony within the African Union organization. All right, uh, on that topic, I'm going to ask, um, a very uncomfortable question, Ambassador, I'm sorry. Um, do you think this, this um, of course, there are many differences between the Palestinian and the Sahrawi uh, conflicts and, and stories and histories, but do you think this, this alliance, this closeness between Israel and Morocco um, will have some sort of, of, I don't know, support from each other in each other's causes, Israel against Palestine and Morocco against the Sahrawi. And, and uh, will, will it threaten the possibility to, to actually resolve these two conflicts in the future? As, uh, as I'm witness from the, uh, for this, all the media's sources, we are witnessing uh, some texts and uh, uh, suggestions that uh, the presence of uh, Israel in the region it will harm the Palestinian uh, 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 rights and uh, will is not it's a contradiction uh, with the principles and the uh, rules of the African Union because the uh, the uh, our organization. The African organization uh, has its uh, tradition, support, and solidarity with uh, the Palestinian cause of Palestinian um, people as part of its, uh, uh, I mean, uh, principles of and the guidance which has uh, uh, been reflected 
in all the uh, decision adopted by several uh, uh, summits of the organization from the beginning, from the uh, AU, in which has been founded, as you know, created in 1963. Yes, on that topic, actually, um, Israel was, was accepted as, a, as an observer at the African Union about two weeks ago. And I saw a huge, like a very strong um, opposition from South Africa and from other countries, um, specifically against Israelis' uh, presence in, um, in Africa. And so I was reading some people that were actually talking about Morocco's influence and, uh, and pressure to accept Israel as an observer in the African Union against most of the principles that the African Union stands for. Um, we have another question from Florencia Urbano. Yeah, yeah, just to say one word yes. on, that, on, that, on that topic. Of course. Uh, yeah, I, I think South Africa, Algeria, and other uh, uh, states, uh, member states of the African Union as, uh, 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 as part of the important, this important uh, sovereign state within the organization opposed uh, this uh, status uh, granted by the uh, the chairmanship of the organization, I, the, the commission, without any large consultation, and this is what said the minister, our minister of foreign affairs, and the uh, uh, Algerian community wrote, and it is clear that Algeria, as part of this opposing process to that uh, status. Uh, 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 granted by the uh, chairman of the Commission of African Unity to Israel. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, Florencia Urbano, she thanks you for the talk, and she would like to know how are the, the, the humanitarian conditions of Sahrawi refugees in Algeria um, within the context of the pandemic? I think uh, it's it's maybe up to the uh, the uh, Sahrawi authorities, official Sahrawi authorities, to talk about this. But what I can uh, uh, talk, about, uh, I can uh, say about that that Algeria is uh, itself uh, facing this pandemic as all the world are doing the same, and help or what uh, uh, the Algerian authorities can. Uh, help the uh, Sahrawi people to face this uh, uh, problem. Ambassador, would you mind if we ask uh, Ma to ask to answer that question for us? His his present here. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, Ma, nos podrías permíteme te doy eh, la posibilidad de hablar. Discúlpame que te estoy ubicando acá. Ya puedes hablar. Sería interesante si nos pudieras contestar esa pregunta. Ma, ¿me oyes? Ma, ahí tienes el micrófono prendido. No suena. All right, maybe he's having problems with the sound. Yeah. Um, maybe we can move on and then we can come back to, to Ma a bit later. All right. Ambassador, the next question comes from Esteban in Costa Rica. He asks, in what way uh, the European Union has tried or not to find a path to settle an agreement between both, both countries, considering Morocco is key to control in a certain way, the migration from Africa to Europe? Sorry, I didn't get the question. The question is, in what way has the European Union tried or not to find a path to settle an agreement between both countries, considering that Morocco is key to control in a certain way the migration from Africa to Europe. Yeah, for the for the migration, it's uh, maybe part of the uh, the uh, Moroccan uh, authorities to respond to that uh, part of the question. But uh, uh, I don't know whether I'm not aware whether the. Uh, the, uh, you, uh, the European Union 
has officially offered uh, uh, a certain mediation between the two countries. All right, thank you, Ambassador. We have another question from Argentina from uh, Professor Silvia Perazzo. She says, Mr. Ambassador, to complement the question of the Sahara representative, how do you think that the diplomatic breakdown can affect Maghreb stability? Do you think that this attitude can worsen the situation of the Sahel? Of, of course, I think the security uh, issue has to be um, uh, considered as a global issue, not only for the Maghreb, uh, but also for the affecting the security of uh, the uh, uh, Sahel. But it's up, it's the responsibility of all the countries in the region to address this issue on the basis of uh, responsibility, but also of objectivity and uh, uh, fairness and responsibility. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, before, in, during your talk, you were mentioning that the, the Moroccan government made some statements um, on the possibility of some Algerian uh, populations to, to gain independence or to have more, in the, more autonomy than they do. This goes completely against what the African Union says. Article, I think it's two, no, it's 4H, I think, of the, of the charter in which it says that no borders can be modified after independence in the whole continent. So what we do see now is, I mean, th there's no argument about that. It's Morocco specifically and directly trying to destabilize de Algeria against African uh, law and against African rules. Yes, you are completely right. And I'm, um, uh, 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 I have the same opinion. This is exactly what said our minister on August 24, and mem uh, even uh, even uh, before that, after just after the uh, the uh, the circulated document by the uh, Moroccan uh, ambassador to uh, UN, we said that even that suggestion is against the interest of Morocco, because even in Morocco, there is uh, uh, Berbers as part, and the Berbers are present in all the region of uh, North Africa. Even this is against its interest and dangerous uh, thing. And from the beginning, the AU, when uh, it has been created, it is on the basis of uh, the uh, commitment of all member states that they will respect the borders inherited from the colonial period. And I totally agree with you. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, Ambassador, we just found out that um, Ambassador Ahmed Moulay Ali, the General Director for Latin America and the Caribbean of the Sahrawi Ministry of Foreign Affairs, yes. is here with us today. Mm -hmm. uh, would you mind if we give him the, the, the word so he can answer that question for us? Please, please go ahead. Thank, yeah. thank you. Embajador Ahmed, me oye? Sí, lo escucho perfectamente. Perfecto, Embajador, muchas gracias por su presencia. <laughs> Eh, el embajador no, Aper nos acompaña desde los campamentos de refugiados saharauis en el sur de Argelia, cerca de Tinduf, eh, y, quiero, y quiero transmitirle la pregunta que nos hicieron antes. Eh, quisiera saber cómo son las condiciones humanitarias de los refugiados saharauis en Argelia, teniendo en cuenta el contexto de pandemia. Bueno, primeramente agradecerles este gran trabajo. ¿Me escuchan? Sí, señor, sí, señor. Uh, uh, les agradezco este gran trabajo porque es muy importante para poder visualizar un poco la lucha y la causa saharaui en nivel de América Latina. Para nosotros América Latina es nuestra segunda casa debido a las relaciones culturales y históricas que nos unen, que seguramente usted y los, todos los oyentes y las oyentes lo saben. Y quiero darle las gracias a su excelente embajador por su tiempo y por estar ahí con nosotros. ¿sí? La situación ahora 
uh, es preocupante en varios, en varios factores. Por una parte es preocupante en la zona ocupada, creo que ustedes saben de la situación de las tres mujeres, Sultana Jaya, que están uh, asediadas en su casa, hecha como una prisión, y ayer por la tarde, a una determinada hora de la noche, varios agentes policíacos entraron a la casa y echaron encima de ellos un producto parece que lleva la coronavirus y aparecieron desde hoy con la coronavirus de esa sustancia y como están asediadas no pueden asistir, ningún médico puede entrar, no pueden tener medicina, pues no sabemos qué va a ser de su vida. Y eso es un llamamiento que hago al mundo también a nivel de toda la, la, la situación pues todos los presidentes políticos saharauis que están en las cárceles marroquíes, por un lado, están en las cárceles lejos de sus familias, que no los pueden ver, y segundo, la situación en la cárcel marroquí de la pandemia es bastante crítica y se trata a los saharauis de una manera bastante, bastante secundaria. Tercer punto es, como usted sabe, estamos en una situación bélica, Diariamente el ejército saharaui está atacando al muro. Anoche hubo seis, seis eh, operaciones militares. Marruecos intenta silenciar esta guerra. Desgraciadamente es triste decirlo, pero ya hay muchos muertos y heridos en el ejército marroquí. Lo sabemos nosotros. Incluso sabemos de unos 800 que lograron escapar del muro marroquíes y entraron y algunos incluso llegaron a, a España inmigrantes. Y esta situación bélica, bélica se va, si la comunidad internacional no se mueve, y las Naciones Unidas no se mueven, esta situación bélica se va a aumentar, va a pasar a otra segunda fase y somos nosotros, el ejército saharaui, que le va a empujar hacia otra segunda fase para que, el ejer, para que la comunidad internacional se dé cuenta que sin el respeto del derecho del pueblo saharaui, la determinación, la guerra no va a paralizar. A nivel de los campamentos, pues hay un problema serio debido solamente a que, como usted sabe, las fronteras están cerradas. Entonces, mucho de la ayuda humanitaria que tiene que llegar a los campamentos de refugiados no llega, llega poco. Entonces, hay una escasez de material, sobre todo material sanitario, material escolar para las escuelas y, y alimentos, debido a que, a que esto, a que... A que a que no se puede, se está intentando organizar unas ciertas caravanas desde España para acá y se está intentando hacer una caravana en octubre para que traiga, pero es un problema muy serio. En lo que es la, la, el COVID, la pandemia a nivel de los campamentos, pues sí, tuvimos a, hasta ahora, desde el comienzo, desde el marzo del comienzo hasta ahora, cerca de 1.150 o 200 casos, sobre unos cerca de 20 y tantos fallecidos, pero sí consiguió dar la vuelta a la situación y ahora ya hay menos casos y hay casi casi no fallecidos. Durante esta semana no hubo ningún fallecido y incluso la gente ya sabe toda esa propaganda que se hizo a nivel internacional contra las vacunas también llegó aquí. Pero no, desde el mes pasado ya la gente se está dando cuenta y se está acercando a vacunarse y eso está ayudando a que esto se baje. Entonces, más o menos esta es la situación. Sí, a nivel internacional, pues estamos, eh, en fin, preparando para la Cuarta Comisión de Naciones Unidas, la Asamblea General de Naciones Unidas, y ahí, a través de usted, estimado señor profesor, imagino que es usted un doctor profesor, espero conocerle algún día, eh, queremos hacer un llamamiento a todos los, eh, a los eh, eh, políticos, sobre todo a los académicos, más bien a los medios de comunicación para que puedan participar, ir y participar en la Cuarta Comisión Esta de Naciones Unidas que debate sobre la situación de la autodeterminación de los pueblos y también movilizar fuerzas políticas, opiniones para empujar a los países latinoamericanos del Caribe que en sus intervenciones en el Consejo, en la Asamblea General, buscan la justicia, buscan el derecho internacional. Y por último, le menciono, estamos en vísperas de una sentencia jurídica del Tribunal de la Justicia Europea 
que según todos los datos que tenemos va a ser a nuestro favor contra el robo de la riqueza saharaui, principalmente el fosfato, la pesca y la, y la, y la agricultura, que algunas, muchas empresas europeas y algunas latinoamericanas, desgraciadamente, están comprando a Marruecos, a Marruecos, cosa que ilegalmente, desde la sentencia jurídica del 2016 y 2018, que hizo el Tribunal de Justicia, es algo ilegal. Va a haber otra sentencia que esperamos que para mediados de septiembre o más tardar a finales, que va a corroborar y va a dar más fuerza todavía a, a nuestra razón de que nadie debe comprarle a Marruecos las riquezas del Sáhara Occidental hasta que se apliquen las resoluciones de Naciones Unidas y de la Unión, la Unión Africana. Entonces es algo también importante que estamos esperando. Esto es más o menos la situación en general, pero estoy a sus órdenes para quien tiene alguna otra pregunta. Muchas gracias, embajador. Muchísimas gracias. So, um, thank you very much. That was Ambassador Ahmed from the Saharawi uh, camps, refugee camps in Algeria, in southern Algeria. Ambassador, we uh, have some more questions for you. Oh. Um, question number one: How much is the responsibility from the from Pegasus espionage software on this diplomatic breakdown? Yeah, thank you. It's a very pertinent question. And uh, uh, our minister talked about this. It was uh, very, uh, uh, I mean, it's uh, an attack uh, confirmed by our minister on that uh, uh, program initiated by the Moroccan authorities on their responsibility and we didn't get any response on that also all right and this is a, a software developed by israel right i think so this is okay. what all uh, uh sources uh, developed and uh, uh, uh indicated all right thank you ambassador i think i think uh, this is what i read on uh, mediatic uh, uh, reports that this uh, enterprise, Israeli enterprise, did not get any chance uh, to say and to uh, mm, uh, submit this program without the due authorization by the Israeli government. Thank you, Ambassador. There's another question in the chat um, from Professor Rafael uh, Piñeros. He says, um, how can we, as Colombia, uh, take advantage of the political relation with Algeria to um, encourage commercial relationships with the country? What, what um, common elements can we exploit? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk about an important issue for me as ambassador here. Uh, of my country to Colombia, we have initiated a process to consolidate the economic and commercial cooperation between the two countries. We are on the way to sign and uh, understand the understanding memorandum of cooperation between Colombia and uh, Algeria within the context of uh, micro enterprises of the two uh, countries. Maybe the next month we will sign this uh, memorandum. We are exploring also possibilities of investment, Colombian investment in Algeria or uh, Algerian investment in Colombia. Uh, and uh, we are on our way to uh, see the possibilities to export some products to, uh, uh, to uh, Colombia. Uh, I think it's uh, time to go further to the uh, economic uh, cooperation between the two uh, countries because the uh, political relationship is good. I, we uh, can maybe uh, be on the same, same level of uh, cooperation as we are doing on political side. We are on uh, ex uh, our way to 
ex, uh, to uh, expand this uh, cooperation uh, in the university field, as you know, uh, Professor uh, Delgado, this is an important uh, topic and uh, very uh, uh, on the uh, top agenda of the uh, embassy and the Minister of Foreign Affairs from the, uh, the two, uh, uh, the two uh, parts. Thank you, Ambassador. There's another question from Silvia Perazzo in Argentina. She asks, beyond the solution proposed by the UN, can Algeria envision another solution to the Sahrawi issue for the recognition of its rights? I think as I uh, uh, recall before, the solution is based uh, on the decision made and the uh, agreement signed by the two parties, the uh, Moroccan uh, side and the Polisario when they signed the agreement on 1991, which is the ceasefire and the uh, to organize by the UN a free uh, and fair uh, uh, self-determination referendum. This is this is the the solution uh, that the uh, international community uh, made for this uh, uh, conflict, and unfortunately. We are far, far from this, uh, this, uh, uh, this point, this objective. And what has happened in the recent uh, period is very dramatic for the, uh, uh, the region. Ambassador, another, another tricky question. So what can we do if Morocco refuses to, to organize that referendum? He has ref uh, Morocco has refused for decades. And there's no advent. Uh, ad, uh, we can't see any any moves towards organizing it from Morocco. So what do we do? I'm sure that the Sahrawi people will uh, uh, will progress with this objective of a national struggle to get his right to uh, independence. This is one. The second thing, which is important, is the responsibility of the international community and the UN, specifically the uh, Security Council. It is up to this body to be responsible because we have a little uh, uh, thing we have achieved on that topic. And uh, from the date of 1991, the Sahrawi people was very patient. And after that, we so the Moroccan authority, uh, they denied the, what they have made as decision and that way they, why, what they agreed from 1991 as agreement with Polisario after 16 years of uh, struggle and war. And this is very, uh, we regret that, that uh, situation because we have uh, international law and international decisions uh, violated uh, 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 once ago and repeatedly by the, uh, uh, by the Moroccan authorities. And they have to, uh, to respond to their responsibility towards what they signed. They signed in 1991. Uh, in clear, uh, they signed an agreement which provides two commitments. One is ceasefire, this is what we, say, we saw, and to organize and to accept to organize the uh, uh, self-determination uh, uh, referendum. And this is the responsibility and the responsibility of the international community. All right, thank you, Ambassador. There's another question, and as you know, this is an academic uh, space. So academics usually ask uh, tough questions and tricky questions and sensitive okay. questions. Um, Professor Felipe Medina asks, if it is possible, Mr. Ambassador, and he knows it is a sensible, uh, sensitive issue, can you tell us why Algerian people um, have been protesting massively? What can you tell us about the political transition since 2019? in the country. 
yeah, this is uh, this is uh, an issue which I'll go out from the uh, topic we are talking about. This is Algerian political situation, internal political uh, uh, situation. We are uh, progressing to give uh, uh, answers from uh, uh, to to that protesters and. Uh, you know what we have organized as elections, presidential elections, legislative election, and we are uh, preparing a, a local uh, and the parliamentary uh, uh, no uh, local uh, election for the time being, which has been uh, 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 which has been. Uh, uh, as decided by the Algerian authorities on the 27th of November, uh, next uh, next November. All right, so elections in two months. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, Ambassador. Okay. Um, are there any other questions from the participants that you want to ask, um, Ambassador? Um, I can't see any more questions. There are, however, two things that I would that I would like to say. First, um, we have um, a message from, from Ma, the, the Sahrawi representative. He's thanking you, Ambassador, uh, for your commitment and uh, your, your fight for the Sahrawi cause. And then, Ambassador, if you agree with it, um, give me a second. Ambassador uh, Ahmed Mulai Ali from the Western Sahara would like to say some more words. If you're okay with it, we can okay. give him the... Okay. Yeah. Um, Ambassador Ahmed? Hello. Oh, si. Hola. 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 Si. Me escucha? Si, señor. Shukran, Saadat Safir. Perdón que le diré, me dieron dos palabras al embajador. Saadat Safir, shukran. Shukran, Zazilan, ala nidal, ala kul la amal. Inshallah, nshufak, nshurbu qahwa ba'a ba'ad. إن شاء الله إن شاء الله إن شاء الله la causa la República Árabe Saharaui Democrática tuvo una solidaridad extraordinaria en nivel de Latinoamérica y el Caribe, empezando con el primer reconocimiento de Panamá y luego siguieron todos prácticamente, menos Brasil, Chile, Argentina, prácticamente el resto había dado ese reconocimiento a la República Saharaui. Pero después cuando Marruecos se dio cuenta que estábamos ganando la solidaridad entre los latinos y caribeños empezó a moverse con una política de corrupción y cheques hacia América Latina y consiguió, eh, ¿cómo se dice?, congelar bastantes relaciones. Por esta razón nosotros creíamos que se conozca la política del cheque, así se titula el libro, la política del cheque que utiliza Marruecos en América Latina contra la República Saharaui. Este libro es de mi autoría, aunque lleva un seudónimo. Le he puesto el autor como un, un gran solidario mexicano, con Fernando Contreras, que en paz descanse, es el que... Eh, pero el libro es mío y quiero ponérselo a, 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 a la mano de todos ustedes para que lo pueden utilizar, hacer con él todo lo que sea posible. Lo hemos editado en México y lo hemos repartido desde México, pero cuando tuvimos muchos llamamientos de mucha gente que quería tener el libro, lo hemos digitalizado. Por eso yo aquí subo mi correo electrónico para que toda persona que esté aquí con nosotros en este importante encuentro, que era el libro digital, solo tiene que escribirme y con mucho gusto se lo mando y que lo utiliza como pueda y que nos ayuda a compartirlo con otras muchas gentes. Eso es lo que quería decir y muchas gracias. Muchas y ahí gracias, está mi correo. Muchas gracias, embajador Ahmed. Um, so, ambassador, what we can say now is that after hearing you two talk in Arabic, what we need is to go to Algeria and learn Arabic. That sounds beautiful. Yeah. You, 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 know, you, you know, Professor, 
I could help you even here in Bogota to learn Arabic before you love, get to Algiers. I would love that. I would absolutely <laughs> love that. I know All right. it would be tough because it's a little bit difficult Arabic language. I know that. I yeah. know. I think Professor Medina speaks a little bit of Arabic. I, I, I'm not sure. But anyway. Okay, good. Um, we are getting a lot of thank yous uh, in the chat room and a lot of requests uh, for, for the book that, that Ambassador Ahmed was talking about. Um, I want to uh, invite you all to ask any other questions you might have. And if there aren't any other questions, maybe Ambassador, maybe you would like to say a few closing remarks. Yeah, just to thank you warmly and sincerely for this opportunity you gave to me to talk and to remember some, uh, some important uh, uh, remarks made by Minister Amtal Amama on August 24 on that uh, topic, very seriously and uh, very important for the uh, Algeria. Uh, of, for uh, Algerian government and for the uh, stability and security for the region. Uh, thank you for giving me also this opportunity to talk slightly uh, for, uh, with regard to the perspectives, positive perspectives uh, of the relationship between Algeria and uh, Colombia as part as ambassador here accredited and uh, it is opportunity also to thank you, Professor Delgado, for uh, all efforts you made to help me and to help the uh, uh, Algerian embassy here uh, to develop uh, the uh, cooperation between the two countries in your uh, field. And it is uh, my pleasure uh, always to participate in such important diplomatic or uh, uh, cooperation and uh, uh, I mean uh, diplomatic topics and cooperation between Algeria and Colombia. Thank you for this opportunity and uh, uh, many thanks to all our friends who participate in this uh, uh, debate on this uh, academic course. Thank you so much, Ambassador. I, I, I also want to thank you um, and the and the embassy, we've we've always have have had supports from the Algerian embassy here in Bogota, and as many of you know, we are, we have actually taken 30, uh, 27 students to Algeria before the pandemic, and we I hope to do it again. Yeah. And we hope to do it again when when the pandemic is over. But for us uh, at the university and for us at Alala, it is always a pleasure to have you and 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 your government um, supporting our academic activities such as this one. Um, please be sure that we will be inviting you to other activities in the future. Let's Thank hope you. they can Thank be um, not not on Zoom, but but actually uh, in the same like in the same room. Um, we can go back to presentiality. And uh, again, thank you for your time, and thank you all for for being part of this activity. And we hope to see you next Tuesday when we will be talking on Dialogo Salada again on, uh, we will be talking about Nelson Mandela and his legacy um, on purpose of uh, uh, celebrating 30 years of his visit to Venezuela. We will be uh, discussing Nelson Mandela with two professors from, from the University of Los Andes in Merida in Venezuela. Um, thank you all for your, for your participation. Ambassador, thank you again. And thank you to Ambassador Ahmed from, from Southern Algeria for being here with us. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Just to tell you that uh, on Tuesday, on that uh, uh, important uh, uh, celebrating anniversary, I just to <coughs> to recall that uh, I was in 1990, I think, uh, part of the preparatory committee that uh, uh, has uh, prepared the first visit of Nelson, late Nelson. Mandela, leaders of Africa to Algeria. It was the first visit abroad of Nelson Mandela uh, uh, just uh, after his uh, 
liberation from the prison in South Africa. And it could be maybe opportunity to uh, send you some photographs of that moment. Ooh, that would be fantastic, Ambassador. If you could send Thank them you. to us, we yeah. could share them with, with the assistants on, on Tuesday. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Ambassador. Have a nice day. You too. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Feliz día para todos. Muchas gracias. Ciao.